We're at a unique juncture in human history. It's not just the 21st century, but we're at a juncture in which these leaders, not just of the G8, but the G20, have enormous power, political, economic, humanitarian, and military power. And that power isn't always serving, from our vantage point as religious leaders, the poor, the hungry, the deprived of this world that now number one out of seven persons on this planet. So the religious leaders come together and say, we affirm certain things in common. And then you've made these promises to the global community. How are you doing on that? In addition, because we believe in the dignity of human beings and we believe in the importance of religious freedom and these other things, these are additional concerns that we want you to consider that are moral issues. Every year we change the, our concerns, the global society's concerns are changed, but some, some of them we should not forget, even the society has changed. So, like uh, religious freedom or uh, human rights. There is something spiritual, there is something um, transcendental about the way humans live their lives that, um, that religion captures. And I think that to ignore that contribution would be to miss the, the, both some of the important drivers of politics, but also the, the implications of our, of our economies and our policy decisions. In 2005, there was an ecumenical group of Christians that got together and said, we need to deliver a statement to the G8. It became interfaith in 2006 in Russia. The host country writes a draft, and often they will focus on issues that the political leaders are saying they're going to highlight that, at that summit that year. Then feedback is given, um, are there, the question is raised, are there things that we want to, as interfaith leaders, add that are our unique concerns in addition to what they're focusing on? And are there things in terms of the issues that they are focusing on that we want to comment on? And out of the interaction, then comes the statement that gets delivered to media and to the political leaders. today reflects yet another element of the extent to which religious leaders have for a very long time been able to, to break down these superficial barriers of distinction and delineation based on identity and have really been able to come together and transcend their, um, both appreciate their, their unique contributions and their distinctions, but transcend those contributions and distinctions in order to, to uplift these key, key, very, very basic priorities that um, all of the world religions share. It's a good occasion to practice to the, uh, uh, manage the interface activities because each country has a different totally different uh, cultural or the traditional or religious background, I think it is also a good occasion to know each other and for making a new, uh, mutual understanding. We happen to believe collectively as relig religious leaders, very diversely representative, from Christian all the way to uh, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, and, uh, and a broad spectrum of religious faith leaders present here today. We happen to believe that we have to challenge those political leaders to have the moral and the political will to address the needs of that one billion people on our planet. And that's an important role which no one else can play.